Ah, SummerSlam. What an event it was. It was very emotional, to say the least. SummerSlam was live in Detroit, Michigan, in Ford Field. Over 55,000 people sold out the Ford Field building. SummerSlam was an up and down event. No doubt about it. There was a lot of great action, to say the least. But I think we're going to go over everything that took place, at least the major parts of this show here today. We kicked the show off with Logan Paul taking on Ricochet one on one. They've been feuding all the way back since the Rumble. And honestly, Ricochet has never been in a prime position than he is right now with Logan Paul. Money the Bank kind of kicked it up a notch when they went through the, the table with the Spanish fly. And Ricochet and Logan Paul decided, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to fight each other. We're going to squab at SummerSlam last night, where Ricochet and Logan Paul tore the house down no matter how many times you want to dislike this guy they gotta give him credit logan paul as a wwe superstar is probably the only good thing about logan paul right now and i'm not gonna go over the details of the matches either i'm just gonna tell you how i felt about him just honestly felt like Ricochet and Logan Paul delivered, especially with the ending. Kudos to Ricochet, but in the end, Logan Paul, with the assist of his friend from Impulsive, was able to come through with the Nux, knocked out Ricochet, able to get the win. One, two, three. No complaints from me, honestly. If you're, and if you want to do stupid star ratings, this match, 3.5, not a 4 out of 5. It was a good match. Good match, decent story. A reason why they're both beefy is because they try to one-up each other over the last couple of months with the, within the year. So, there you go. Ricochet and Logan Paul. Great match. Not much to complain about. Then at SummerSlam, we had Cody Rhodes take on Brock Lesnar. A beautiful high package, by the way. I love the story being told that Brock Lesnar was beating the dog shit out of Cody Rhodes to where Cody Rhodes is like, I'm not going to back down. You beat me down, but you're not going to keep me down. And that was evident at SummerSlam when Brock F5 Cody on the outside and Cody got back up by the count of nine to get back in the ring. And then Cody able to find an opening and then delivered the crossroads. One, two, three. Lesnar's shorts were ripped. Ripped shorts. You can see the man draws. <laughs> That's how ripped they were. Cody Rhodes able to get the pin and able to get respect from Brock Lesnar. Lesnar, I guess, being a good guy again on WWE TV, which is not a bad sight to see. But in the end, Lesnar and Cody did their thing. Back-to-back -back matches so far. No complaints from me. Again, stupid star ratings. This match, a 4 out of 5, from my opinion. Because, again, storytelling helps. Then we have, I believe, the Battle Royale. We have the Battle Royale matchup. The last two people that got their entrances in was LA Knight, yeah, and AJ Styles, the phenomenal one. I'm, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm watching AJ Styles come down the aisle, I'm like, damn, you used to beat John Cena at this very show. You used to defend the WWE Championship on this very show. Now you're just a guy in a Battle Royale. Like, what happened? What happened to AJ Styles? From start to finish, nothing much I could say in this match. I would say this match is a uh, 2.5 out of 5 for me because nothing much happened. You know, Omos returned, which was cool. And then the second he got in, I'm thinking, is Omos going to win this whole thing? And then everybody ganged up on Omos, got him out of here, set him packing. But then it got interesting when the likes of LA Knight and Sheamus were the final two. Clothesline to Sheamus, LA Knight. Winner of the Battle Royale, y'all impatient ass niggas were sitting there complaining about LA Knight losing. Triple H lied to us about, oh, good things come to those who wait. Yo, guess what? He beat Sheamus on SmackDown on Friday, and then he wins the SummerSlam Battle Royale. The SummerSlam Battle Royale itself may not mean anything, but this could be the catalyst of the rise of LA Knight. Yeah! Then we go on to Shane.
Shayna Baszler versus Ronda Rousey in a MMA rules match. I'm not going to complain about this match. Honestly, I enjoyed it because I don't mind a variety in my wrestling. So looking forward to this, see how they're going to do. Yeah, you know, it's more about ground, ground wrestling and, and grappling, which obviously, to the, not to the WWE crowd, to wrestling fans in general, MMA just doesn't work in wrestling. Yeah, there's times I heard the crowd chanting this was boring, and I can understand from their perspective it was. Plus the show, plus the match kind of dragged on a bit. I would have let this match be about 10 minutes. This felt like it went 15-20, not gonna lie. Baser winning was the right choice in my eyes. Apparently Rousey is done with WWE, which kind of sucks, but her run this year or the last year has not been great. So. Then we get to McIntyre and Gunther for the Intercontinental title. Now, I will not lie to you. The match was decent, to be honest. It wasn't on the levels of Sheamus versus Gunther. It wasn't even on the level of the triple threat at WrestleMania this year. Drew McIntyre, I don't know. It just felt, something felt off here. Maybe it was the placing of the match in the show. That might be it. I don't know. But in the end, Gunther with the, the chop, the drop kick, the Larry, and then the power bomb for the win retaining the title 472 plus days is coming that hunky tongue title reign is coming to an end and i'm for it the ring general continues to reign as your intercontinental champion but yeah a rating from this match for me not the much 2.5 out of 5 what a match that did blow me away was the World Heavyweight Championship match. Seth freaking Rollins defend the world title against Finn Balor. Those two put on a hell of a match, and I was really invested into the story because I really bought into the idea that this could be Balor's time once again, where Balor, seven years later, beat Seth Rollins for a championship at SummerSlam. Not the case this time. Judgment Day intervene. They try to help him out. So many kickouts in this match, too. I thought Rollins had him. Nope. I thought Balor had him. Nope. I thought the interference of Judgment Day guaranteed Balor to win the championship. Rollins said, nah, nah, nah. We're going to end it with the crowd singing my song with me as world champion. The second Priest delayed giving Balor the Money to Bank contract or the briefcase. He slid it in the ring. Rollins saw the opportunity. He saw Balor try to pick it up, stomped to the back of the skull, onto the briefcase, and Rollins gets the win, retains the championship. Very interesting, very crafty was that ending to that matchup. That, to me, was match of the night. That match was five out of five for me because the story was there, the action was there, the pacing, everything clicked. This match went 0 to 100 real quick, and I can't be mad at it whatsoever. Balor, Rollins, best match of the night. You can't tell me otherwise. Then we get to the triple threat match for the WWE Women's title. Honestly, this match, I was kind of going into it hoping that Asuka would retain. Towards the ending, that's where it got me. It kind of kicked up a notch when Bianca Belair was rolling, and then Bianca Belair was shoved off the top by Charlotte, landed on the outside, and I thought she messed up her knee. And I was, I bought into that she messed up her knee. And then Bianca Belair had EMTs or ringside doctors checking on her and shit. I'm thinking, yo, she's done. It's Oscar and Charlotte. Oscar is probably going to lose to Charlotte like she normally does. This is going to be shit. I'm not going to like this. But then Bianca Belair said, fuck that. I'm gonna get back in there. And she did. She got back in the ring. And then she hit a 450 splash. She scratched and clawed to get back to the top rope. 450 while Flair was in the figure eight position. Landed the 450, unable to get the win. Asuka was taken out. Flair hit the figure eight onto Bianca Belair. I thought, yeah, B Belair is tapping. Flair is getting her 15th title reign. It's over. Asuka pulls up, missed in the face of Charlotte. And then I thought, for a split second, Oscar hit Charlotte Flair while Beller was locked up in the figure eight. That way, Oscar retains the title. I thought they're gonna go that route, but then Beller was able to counter Oscar while locked in the figure eight, and then Oscar got rolled up, and Beller won her, her championship back. And then after that, EO Sky's music plays, and we get a money to bank cash in. 
Bailey jumped Charlotte and Asuka. Io jumped Bianca Belair with a shot to the back of the knee with the briefcase. And then the genius of the sky, just like in my universe mode, cashed in Money to Bank successfully and walks out as the WWE Women's Champion. I won't lie, that triple threat match went on way too long, but it did got good by the time Belair got hurt. Then, at that point, towards Io Sky cashing in and winning the title, I got no complaints there. I will say this match is a 3 out of 5 stars, it's just that this match is a bit too long, but the ending made up for it, in my eyes. Ah, the main event. A match that I hope that was gonna bring me joy. The one time, another big occasion where I think potential the tribal chief was going down. But no! What? Oh, this match, the the tide turned when Solo Sokoa got involved. Yeah, there's a chance that Roman's retaining here. When Jey Uso took out Solo Sokoa. After all that's happened over the last three years, and I remember everything vividly. So for Solo Sokoa to get taken out by Jay in the match, and then for Jay to hit Roman with his own move, the spear, and then to hit him with the Uso splash, I'm like, this is it. I'm gonna pause. One, two, psych, swipe. I'm like, who is this? Another family member, perhaps? It's Jimmy Uso. <laughs> Jimmy Uso, the brother of Jay Uso, the guy who said, I would never treat you like how Roman treated you. Like, I would never stab you in the back. You my brother. Remember that of champions. He said all of that. Yet, he screwed Jay Uso out of the WWE Universal by God title. And then he super kicked him, allowing Roman Reigns to take advantage and retain the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. I was so deflated when I saw Jimmy Uso screw Jay out of the title. I was like, why, man? Out of all people and out of all the timing, my nigga, it has to be you. You gotta do this. You gotta backstab your bro for solo. Now, Jimmy, who's next? The nigga's son? The nigga's dad? <laughs> Like, who's next to screw Jey Uso over here? And well, what was the stipulation that if Jey Uso would have lost, he's out of the family, right? So what happens now? There's so many questions. We're all collectively are like 50 cent right now. We got, we all have 21 questions. Hopefully SmackDown on Friday, we get those answers to those questions. This show was good. Another good year. I would say this is probably a step up from last year. The fact that I was able to review this at the top of my head, I don't remember most of it, but I remember the key moments of all of these matches. And the fact that I'm saying all of this unscripted is incredible. <laughs> and keep this in mind, I was toasty the whole night. So the fact that I can remember all of this is mental. But anyway, what do you guys think of SummerSlam? Did y'all enjoy it? Leave a like, subscribe. I think SummerSlam did very well. Leave your comments down below. Hope y'all enjoy it. Like, subscribe, and I'm out. Later. Yeah.